All right, everybody, welcome to week five of Introduction to Python, Geoke 673. And we're going to cover a really cool spatial package this week called CardoPy. So I'm just here at the course website, and I'm just going to click on week five, CardoPy. So CardoPy is a geospatial data processing package and it can do everything from just plotting basic maps to actually resampling different uh, resampling different spatial maps that you have to a finer or coarser res resolution. You can gap fill different areas of spatial maps using CardoPy. You can reproject which is a really common use of CardoPy. There's a lot that you can do. So first thing that we're going to do over here, I'm just over here in my Anaconda Navigator. I'm under the GeoG 3.8 environment that we set up and I'm going to click over here in Environments and I'm going to just make sure, double check that CardoPy is installed and sure enough it is. So Spider's already open, I'm just going to go Import CardoPy and just to make sure everything is running correctly zoom that in and sure enough we successfully imported CardoPy down here in the console. So CardoPy is built on things like NumPy, Shapely, Proj4 which are projection based libraries as latter two and it also is built on matplotlib for the creation of publication quality maps. So there's some serious high quality maps that you can actually create using CardoPy and especially just from like a spatial perspective, the spatial maps that you can create are pretty advanced. So there's this, these are some definitions that might be useful to know when going through CardoPy and just basic things from projection to actual CRS, coordinate reference system, which is just the definition of the projection in a special format that is actually housed in a basically an international internationally recognized dictionary of coordinate reference systems. Then you also have EPSG, which is a code that references the coordinate reference system. And all of the rest of the following are just different components of the equation that go into the coordinate reference system definition. And ultimately what we get out of a coordinate reference system and what an EPSG references is a Proj4 parameter set. So all a Proj4 parameter set is is just a, a string of definitions, whether it be the, where the datum is on a projection, the globe, the meridian, the parallels. You don't need to know these explicitly, but it's just important to understand that all these things are saying they're just referencing a projection. That's all that is. And it's, a projection just comes down to, you know, the, the Earth isn't flat. So we have an oblate spheroid planet that we're living on and we like to look thing look at things as if they were flat because we're looking at a two-dimensional screen whenever we're looking at a computer unfortunately we have to convert three dimensions down to two dimensions and our three dimension is a really wonky it's not even a, a uniform sphere so we need to project things and this is where this is why really the motivation behind creating a tool like ArcGIS Projection is a big part of that. It's a big motivation for the use of ArcGIS. What we'll find, however, is that well, you don't actually need ArcGIS. We can do everything when it comes to reprojection and resampling with CardoPy. And we'll dive into a little bit of that here. So all we need to really know up above is that CardoPy has references the coordinate reference systems and all you need to know is that that handles the projection so that handles the way that we're trying to visualize this three-dimensional planet we live on in two dimensions. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to copy over these imported packages right here and I'm gonna import CardoPy, I'm going to import CardoPy.CRS as CCRS, so that's Cardo, CardoPy Coordinate Reference System as CCRS, and then we also have matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, one thing that we've grown a little bit more used to as time has gone on. 
run those and sure enough everything ran successfully so that's a good sign now I'm gonna reference the plate carry function from the Cardo Pi coordinate reference system library I'm gonna use, run a help function on that so this is the help function I'm just gonna run a help on that I'm gonna copy this over and let's see I'm just gonna copy it straight to my console I don't necessarily want it saved to my script and this will actually tell me okay what's going on with this specific function there's a lot of information here so plate carry is plate carry is really just a latitude longitude projection so it's it has a name it has a fancy name but all it is is latitude longitude so whenever we're just looking at a 2D image of latitude, longitude, equidistantly spaced, all we're referencing is a plate carry projection. So, and we see that there's a number of, number of different parameters and information that we have here. And all that plate carry really takes is just a central longitude and then has an automatic globe parameter, which is done. It's not important to know. All you need to know is that this is just a latitude, longitude projection. This is a very popular projection. So there's a lot of information in here and we have different geometries, CRSs. There's a lot going on. So what we can actually do is we can just plot a figure based on this projection. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot a figure based on plate carry projection. So here we are. I'm going to open up a plotting a figure instance using plt.figure and then I'm going to declare axes. And my axes are going to be declared as the ax object and I'm going to give that those axes a projection. So if I come down here and I type in plt.axes projection is under kw args. And those are basically extra arguments that are not predefined or referenced because they can be very, it, the, the list can get very lengthy. So within those KW args is a projection. And you actually see this down here in an example. So it's not necessarily one of the arguments here, but if you go down here to the example, projection equals none. So that is predefined if you just were to use plot axes if you just were to say okay on this blank figure window I want to give it axes just like an X and Y axes and those axes are defaultly not going to have a projection they're just going to have flat lawn or in this case XY but we, we need to give it projection we're gonna give it just this basic projection right here so let's just run these first two lines so this is our window, this is our figure, and then these are our axes, our x axes and our y axes. And we ha it has a projection. Because those axes have a projection, we're no longer in x and y. We're now in lat and long. So I can run something like x.coastlines, and I need to run all of these together in, at once. I can't just do it line by line. It has to be all together. And as a result, we were able to use the coastlines function from CardoPy on the X axes. So these are the coastlines of the world in plate carry projection. And the reason that the map and the figure was able to geolocate where the act where the actual coastlines were is because we gave this particular set of axes a defined projection. So same thing, we can also use different projections such as mole wide. So I'm just going to do all the thing I'm replacing here is I'm just going to use ccrs.molewide and then I'm going to use a stock image and all that is is just a stock uh, 
geostationary satellite image of Earth. So it's taken a little bit. It has to download some, some aspects of it. But there we go. This is now this figure now has axes that are in mole wide projection. And then we just added within these axes or on these axes the stock image, which is just a stock image of Earth. We can also have a little bit more we can add a little bit more to these plots, so we can add text and lines to above plot. So, come down here and I'm going to declare New York Lawn and New York Lat as negative 75 and 43 respectively. Now I'm just going to run these first two lines, and I'm also going to run New Delhi, Lat, and Lawn as well. But watch what happens. I run these two lines, and notice that the syntax is a little bit weird. I have New York lawn, comma, New York lat, and then I have the definitions. If I come over here to my variable explorer, there's New York lat, 43, and here's New York lawn, negative 75. New York lawn, negative 75. New York lat, 43. So this is another way to just declare objects, and you'll actually find that if you look online, some programmers will actually code this way when declaring objects, especially if they're coordinated in some aspects. Like, for example, we have the Latin lawns of New York are actually, they're correlated, right? Because they they go hand in hand. They both point to New York City. So that's why they're on the same line. Same thing with New Delhi. And so that's what those look like. So I can make a new figure, and I'm just going to do the same stock image as above, only I'm changing the projection from mole wide to plate carry. Hit run, go back to my plots, and then here's what it looks like. And now that I have this just sort of, sort of stock image with my axis set as latitude and longitude, I can add in the latitude and longitude right here with my plot. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to plot dot plot the lawns and the lats together so basically my x and my y's together and I'm gonna draw a line between those two points and the other big thing down here is that I added in a transform to transform it to geodetic so I said hey, I'm going to give you a line to plot, okay? But I'm going to transform that line so that it matches a geodetic projection. So just so I can show you, let's just change this temporarily to plate carry. Straight line. It's a straight line because we are in latitude and longitude. This is a two-dimensional equidistant grid, okay? So it's just latitude and longitude, but if I change it to something like geodetic, or if I even change it to something like mole-wide, what I'm doing is I'm only transforming, whoops, what did I miss here? I am only transforming this line. So in other words, we're not transforming the image or the axes, we are transforming the line. So that's all we're doing right there. So the line is going to be in geodetic but the projection of the axis is going to be in plate carry. And you might be wondering why I couldn't use mole-y down here. The reason that I couldn't do that is because the units of the axes are different. Geodetic still has latitude longitude units. It's just not equidistant, like it's not, the cells are not equal spacing. In mole-wide, 
the units are not latitude longitude, they're not degrees lat long, they are actually meters. And they're meters from where the prime meridian and the equator intersect usually. So I want to now add some text here and I'm just going to add it, I'm going to subtract 3 degrees from New York Lawn and 12 degrees from New York Lat so that I can put in New York without overwriting, writing that on top of my point there and I'm going to do the same thing with New Delhi and I could change this, I could make this plus 13 and keep an eye on the plot, watch how it changes so it just shifted it a little bit further away from the actual point. So that's all that does. And the reason that we can just do this, we can add 3 degrees longitude or subtract 12 degrees latitude is because our axes have been predefined with the plate carry projection. So whenever we're giving it a number or value, it assumes where we mean degrees latitude or degrees longitude. I can do the same thing with a dashed line and notice that the only difference here is that I'm changing my line style and I'm changing the color so I can just copy this over and now when I go ahead and I plot this I now just have a dashed line and say, okay, here's New York to Delhi. So, but yeah, the key difference here is that we take it take a notice at how these points are connected. And the big idea is that right here I transformed in this gray dashed line. I transformed it based on plate carry, so we transformed the line to the same projection that the axes are, aka we did not need that transform at all. Actually, we could actually just remove that and it would should still run just fine. Yep, same exact image. Same exact thing. So we don't actually need to transform anything. The only reason I did that was just to show you that you just notice that there's a difference in these lines because of that transform. And one, we're transforming this line to a geodetic, and the other, we're transforming it to a plate carry, which is ultimately the same exact projection that our axes are already set in. And just for complete, completion's sake, I'm going to comment this out. Plot image with projections. So once again, the reason that we can add stock image and coastlines is because we've loaded in CardoPy. So whenever we use those functions on the end of an axis, the axis understands what we mean, it understands what we want. And that is why we're able to do this because we loaded in CardoPy. Now, the other thing that we can add here, we don't have to add it via the axes. We can also add it just via CardoPy. And we can, so what we can do is we can load in things as a feature right here. I'm going to add this up here. So CardoPy has a number of features, much besides coastlines as well. And in order to use these coastlines, we're actually going to need to use CF, which is what we read in CardoPy feature as. So we give our projection to the axes, and then we add a feature to those axes. So there we go, and that is a Lambert conformal. So we are now using CardoPy features in conjunction with our CardoPy CRS projection. So we're using the add feature right here. And based on that, we are actually just able to add 
the Cardopie coastline, and we could do anything. We could do lakes. Let's uh, remove this and just put in lakes here. And these are the world's lakes that Cardopie actually has ingested inside of it. So then what we can do, if we load in something like NumPy, and come back up here and I'm gonna import NumPy as NP, just like we normally would. And I'm gonna come down here, more advanced Cardopie plot with NumPy. And I'm gonna copy all of this over and then I'm going to run through what's going on here. I already loaded these. I don't need these anymore. So what I've done here is I've declared a few variables. Central latitude, central longitude, which happen to be the latitude, the central latitude, and the central longitude of the United States. I gave it the extent of the United States. So we have right here, we have our X min x max, y min, y max. In other words, we have our longitude min, our longitude max, latitude min, latitude max. Then I'm going to use, I'm gonna open a figure instance, just like I always do, give it a size of 12 by six, declare my axes where I give it a projection of Alber's equal area, it's just another projection, not equally spaced cells, but I'm going to give it central lawn and central lat. This does use units of longitude latitude. Then I'm going to use the set extent function to set the extent based on my list right here, extent. Then I'm going to add a whole bunch of features and I can also add in different parameters such as edge color and I'm also going to add in grid lines and it ultimately makes a nice plot of the United States looks just like that. And just to show you in real time, oh, NumPy is not defined, so I need name NP is not defined. That means I didn't load it in. Load that in like that. And now it has to download a couple things. And it's just downloading and saving these things behind the scenes. You don't need to worry about where they're being saved or anything like that. What it's downloading is these lakes, land, and rivers maps. And then, sure enough, there we go. There's our plot. So we have rivers, the Cardopie feature, oceans, land, lakes, rivers, all on a map of the United States, just like that. So, there is even another way to go about doing this. So we loaded some pre, we preloaded some rivers here. And what actually happened is my surprise got ruined because it seems like Cardopie has updated the resolution of their default rivers. What that means is when we used to plot rivers just like that, it used to just give us the Mississippi and then we would have to actually download the 50 meter resolution rivers file using Cardopie natural earth feature rivers and lakes center lines and we would have to download that and then plot it like so where instead of giving it a feature preloaded by Cardopie feature we would actually need to download it first in a special way However, that has since changed. And what is going on here is that our default Cardopie feature rivers is now a high resolution version of this file. So that's why we have all these rivers already in here, just like this one. But just for fun, I'm gonna run through this anyway. Download rivers file explicitly. Oops. Okay, so we have, we're just using this Cardopie feature dot natural earth feature. And we're saying, okay, I want to load in this feature. 
It's a physical feature. It's titled rivers underscore lake underscore center lines, and I want the resolution to be 50 meters. Run that, and rivers 50 meter is a Cartopi natural earth feature just like that. And now, what I can do here is I can add this feature. Instead of calling it cf.rivers, I'm going to just call 50, rivers 50 meter, assuming that this is a different file. And I can run that, and now we just have these rivers right here. I left the lakes out of it just to accentuate the rivers. And yeah, so that's how you could go about it. And CardoPy has a number of different earth features that you can download in various resolutions. So if you ever need a higher resolution or a lower resolution other than what is default, defaultly given by CardoPy, you can actually go onto their website, look at what they have, and you can download those features and those shape files that you need directly from Python. So that's a nice advantage of that right there. So now we're going to get into a little bit of a more advanced example here and we're going to plot Hurricane Katrina path using Cardopy. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to load in a couple new packages. First thing that I need to load in is from matplotlib, I need to load in the patches sublibrary as mpatches. Then I need to load in the geom shapely.geometry subpackage as sgeom. And then I already have these loaded, but we'll just load it in, them in again for redundancy sake. And sure enough, everything loaded in correctly. It's good to go. I'm going to give it specific latitude longitude lists lawns and lats just like this. I'm going to run that and so all this is lawns and lats are just a long list of coordinates. I'm going to create a special function called colorize state. We have not gone over this explicitly and I don't exactly expect you to fully grasp this concept, but I just wanted to have it here as an example for future cases where you might need to reference this material when you get this under your belt. So don't worry if this doesn't make sense, but what we're doing is we are creating a function. We're calling it colorized state and we're colorizing it based on the geometry. So what we're doing is we're saying if the geometry Inter dot intersects the track. So in other words, if the track of Katrina intersects the geometry of the state, if the K Katrina goes over the state, color it, make the face color red. Otherwise, make it this color right here. FF7 E00. And for those of you who don't know, that is a hex code. So one way is explicitly telling Python the color by character string where it can actually understand, okay, I know what hex digit, hex code red is. And then the other way is if you want to get really into color, color customization, you can colorize it based on whatever hex code you want. And this is what a hex code looks like. Now, the reason that this doesn't comment out anything is because it's within these apostrophes. It's a character string. If I remove this leading apostrophe, everything going on past this comment sign or this pound sign right here would be ignored by Python. But because it's within this apostrophe, it's good to go. And so this is how you write your own function. And this is exactly how all of these functions that we're loading up and using, they're written in the same format. They obviously do different things and they have different, they're a lot more complicated than this, but ultimately they are all, this is what they all boil down to. What they, we define, we give it a name, we give it some initial face colors, and this is the 
the third way to colorize something in Python, you can actually give it an RGB code. That's what's going on right here. So this is just a big di deep dive into coloring in Python. I would just stick with this unless you really want some custom colors. And you can actually look up, there's an entire like preloaded library within Python, within matplotlib, where it, it actually recognizes red, and then coral, aquamarine, and like some more advanced colors. So you rarely have to use this, but if you really want to get custom with it, you can. So we defined this function, and now, if I just type in color, then tab, there's colorize state. Here's my function right here. And now if I hit parenthesis, it says, okay, we just need to give it a geometry. There's no documentation available. We didn't give it any documentation, but it does tell us the argument that we need to give it. Come back over here. And let's actually copy this all over. This is a lot here. There's a lot to unpack. I'm going to run all of this. And then we're going to run through it line by line. So the first thing that we're actually doing here is we're creating the figure, just like we did above. We are adding axes. And we are, we are going to actually give it a projection just like so. Now, notice that we have some additional some additional information here we haven't really covered that before but all that this is really doing is it's telling where the axes are going to be and we just want to give it a 0011 for now and that all that is is the extent until we define it a projection and at which case we need to redefine the extent ignore this part I need to get rid of this but what we're doing here is we're actually going to set the extent down here and we're just going to assume that our extent, even though they're both in latitude and longitude, let's just assume that our extent is in CCRS geodetic. So what we need to do is we need to convert CCRS geodetic to this Lambert conformal projection. So it's a little bit of a weird projection. So we're actually, we're just saying, okay, geodetic is a latitude longitude projection. Here's our projection of, or here's our extents of the USA. Just like we did before, negative 125 is the west coast, negative 66.5 is the east coast, 20 is south Texas, 50 is Canada. Lawn, lawn, lat, lat. Then what we're going to do is using this shape reader function that we load it in right here we are going to read in a different shape file a special shape file via the shape reader so this is another way to load in a special function and what we're doing is we're loading in a shape file that has the states the provinces and lakes at 110 meter resolution. We want that, that to be the resolution and it has predefined resolutions that are only options available. I think it has like 10 meters, 50 meters, and 110 meters. So those are really your options. The category that we want this function to look under is cultural and then the name of the file is admin1 states provinces lake shape. What we're doing here is we're basically querying an online database. And imagine this to be a folder. So, okay, we're saying, okay, go natural earth. We want a natural earth feature. We need to download it. It doesn't exist on our computer yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this, what's going on behind the scenes here is we're going to a shape database. We're going to the 110 meter folder. Then we're going to the cultural folder as opposed to the physical. And then within those two folders, we want this shape file right here. We want to save that as states underscore shape. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add in a couple of extra 
tidbits right here. We're just adding in background patches. We're setting those to invisible. We're, so that's what we're doing right here. So those are just extra things that can make the plot look a little bit more like we want. Then what we're doing is we are going to zip together these lawns and lats in a line string. So if I actually just copy this over and I save that as X just as a temporary thing, X is a zip object. And the reason that we have to give it a zip object is because that is what the sgeom.line string argument takes. Then we that is our track, and then we're defining our track underscore buffer object as track dot buffer function of two. Then this is kind of where things get a little more complex. We're going to add geometry to this, these axes. So here's our axe that we have predefined. We've added a whole bunch of stuff to it already. We set the extent. It has a projection. Now we're going to give it geometries. And all, what I mean by that is we're just going to give it these states. Give it these state lines. That's all we're going to do. So we have our states reader. We're loading in. This is our sh our shape reader function. Using the reader, there's our shape reader package, which we're using the reader function from. We're reading our states underscore shape, which is this natural earth feature that we've already downloaded and saved. And then we're grabbing the geometry from that shape file. So shape files have geometries, and all that is saying is where the lines are actually drawn on the map. Then we're going to define it. We're just going to say, okay, we know that the projection of this geometry is plate carry. And we're going to style our geometries based on colorized state. Now, this is our function that we wrote up here. Notice that we didn't need to give it a geometry. The reason we didn't need to give it a geometry is because we are already in a geometries function, which is a function within a function, and we defined our track and our track buffer. And so, boom, there we have every single argument we need for these functions are now defined. So, because we didn't define anything explicitly within the function python is going to look to see if we have anything pre any objects predefined in our variable explorer and sure enough we have track and track buffer the reason it's not looking for geometry is because this is our geometry in here then we just add in our track buffer and our track so track Buffer looks like that. Track just is that line right there. So we just added a padding of two around our track, and so that is what the line string does. So we just gave it those lawns and lats, and it just drew this line. And then we can ultimately add this line to our map, and it will be geo referenced. So there it is. There's our lines right there. There's track and track buffer, and then we colorize the states based on whether or not those lines intersect with the state. So there we go. Last thing we're going to do, we're just going to add our tracks and our track buffer. So we give, we give our track. We don't give it a face color. We only give it an edge color of black. So it doesn't have a face color, it just has an edge color. And then we give our track buffer this special face color right here with an alpha parameter of 0 0.5, meaning that we can see through it. It's not opaque. It is half, it's 50% transparent. Then we're just going to add in a rectangle right here. 
rectangles using M patches, give it those face colors, have a labels list, and then add in our legend right there. And this is a professional grade plot. The U.S. states that are, have, were intersected by the track of Hurricane Katrina in 2005. This is publication quality material. Now, this is a very complicated example. I don't expect you to fully understand this yet. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to unpack. But I just want to have this here as a reference for you to come back to if you want to. This is always going to be here for you if you have any, conf any confusions and so on and so forth. So, the last couple examples that I want to run through is adding data to a CardoPy plot. So we're going to shift gears here, and this is more so just a complicated example. I just wanted to be, I just wanted to ha you to have access to. But let's run through something a little bit more, something that makes a little bit more sense, and that is we have some data. We have, let's say we just have temperature data or something like that. And we're just going to give, we're just going to declare lawns and lats from negative 80 to 80 by 25 and 30 to 70 by 20, and we want 25 of those, 25 of those different points. So let's run that. Lawn looks like that. Lat looks like that. So we do lawn dot shape. It's 25. So because we gave lin space from NumPy, 20, we wanted 25. Then we're going to create a mesh grid. So basically, we have these two lists: longitude and lat latitude. And they're sorry, not lists, but they're one-dimensional arrays. So they're just vectors. We're going to mesh these two vectors together. And what that does is it basically says, here's my array of lats, here's my array of lawns. Let's put them together via mesh grid and make a grid or a matrix out of this. Then we're just going to do some fancy math to change up these values a little bit and actually give us some data. So that's all we're doing right here. So after we run mesh grid, Flat 2D now looks like that. And notice that we have a lot of repeating variables now because it's all about the intersections. So if you have a latitude of 50 and then you have a longitude going from negative 80 to 80, you have negative 80 at 50 and you have negative 75 at 50, negative 70 at 50. So that's why you have those repeating variables, or not variables, but numbers. So basically I have a 2D lawn, a 2D lat, and then data that is going to be the same size and the data doesn't matter what the values are, they're just random. Create our figure and then use a contour map from matplotlib. Here's my Y, or sorry, here's my X, here's my Y, here's my Z. Longitude, latitude, data. Oh, I did not run data, so I had to run that first. And here we go. 30 degrees north to 70 degrees north, negative 80 degrees west to 80 degrees east. Now what I can do, I have that. is I can plot this data on CardoPy. So we had to make a mesh grid and it was a little bit more complicated up here. But now all I'm going to hand it is just my one dimensional array lawn, my one dimensional array lat, and my data. And I'm going to plot that onto a global extent under the CCRS projection and has coastlines added to it. We run that, and that looks okay. That is exactly what we wanted. 
we're negative 80 to 80, so here's negative 80, here's 80, and then we have our from 30 to 70, so that is where we are in the map, so okay, things make sense. So all we needed to hand it for this contour F was longitude and latitude. Come down here, we can use an even crazier projection called rotated pole, and I can predefine this projection. So I'm going to say, okay, projection equals CCRS dot rotated pole as with a pole longitude of negative 177 and a pole latitude 37.5. And then I can copy this over. Copy that over and then look down here. Now my axes, I'm defining projection as projection. Run that, and now look how crazy these two plots are so different. But the data is covering the same points. However, it's not projected correctly. This is not a rotated pole projection. Look, the data looks like it's in the same spot. But look at how different our map is. I spoke prematurely there. This is not okay. We gave it this weird projection, but the data is in the same spot. So something is wrong. Here's the problem. Problem is that our axes are rotated pole, but our data is not in rotated pole projection. So what I need to do is I need to transform that data to my rotated pole. And the way that I need to do that is I need to give it, I'm going to say, okay, I want you to transform this data from this projection to the projection of my axes. The projection of my axes is rotated pole. The projection of my data is plate carry. It's just latitude, longitude. So what I need to do is I need to transform this data to the projection of the axes so that everything makes sense. Come over here, run that, and now the data is actually in the right spot. So we come over here and just see, okay, in my plate carry version of this plot, we have, you know, Nova Scotia, part of Canada, briefly part of the East Coast over here, Northern Africa and Europe. Over here, we had West Coast of the United States and China, Japan, Korea. That's wrong. The data should be right here. So we needed to tell, we needed to transform that data to match the same projection that we're plotting it on. So we have data, but it, if the grid that it's plotting on is a different projection, we need to reproject the data before everything is placed on the grid in the correct spot. That's all we're doing right here. Now, the last thing that I just wanted to show, and this has to do more with just getting you set up for the assignment this week, is that we are going to use NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, X-Array, which we covered two weeks ago, in conjunction with CardoPy. I'm going to load these in. I'm going to preload the data set air temperature as DS, and this is what DS looks like. Once again, we've dealt with this data set before. It's just air temperature from 2013 to 2015. I'm going to convert this air temperature to Fahrenheit, like so. So I'm going to grab the values, which just gives me an array. So OK, there's the values. It's just in a big old array now. So this is how I'm contacting the raw data. I'm going to subtract 273.15 from everything to get it out of Kelvin and into Celsius. 
Then I'm going to multiply by 9 fifths and add 32 to convert it to Fahrenheit. And so I'm overwriting all of these values over here so that they are now in Fahrenheit. So now, instead of being in Kelvin, come over here and just print out the values, and now I'm in Fahrenheit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one time slice and I'm going to create a separate object and call it air temp. So I just use the select function from x-ray once again, set my time and tell it that I need the nearest method, meaning that I, w I just want the closest time to this timestamp. It doesn't have to be exact. Here's air temp. So Boom, there's my time, so there's my lat lon. So this is now a data array. It's a one, it's just one time slice. It's a matrix, so it's a two-dimensional array. We have dimensions are latitude and longitude. Then we have air temperature points for each of those latitudes and longitudes. And now I'm gonna bring in CardoPy, which we already have preloaded. I'm going to give it a projection of my, my axis, a projection of CCRS Robinson. I know that my data is in CCRS plate carry, so I need to transform this plot from here. And look at this. I have my axes all set up right here. So there's my axes. So if we just were to copy and plot this, this is what the map looks like. Okay. And then to that map, I'm going to add an air temperature dot plot. And so air temp dot plot. So because this is an X-ray instance, we have that X-ray plotting feature that we can query straight from it. And now what I can do is I can just add this air temp plot to my axes. And I'm going to define it. I'm going to say, okay, hey, the axes or ax for this plot are going to be these axes, aka ax. So I, I could name this ax1, and then I would just need to have ax equals ax1 down here. Remember, my data for air temp is in latitude longitude. It's in plate carry. And there we go. Lat lawn. If it's in latitude lawn, so you can just assume that most of the time it's going to be in play carry. Sometimes it's not. Check with your data. We know that this one's play carry. I'm going to give it a minimum a minimum value to plot and a maximum value to plot. So that's 20 degrees Fahrenheit as the min and 50 degrees Fahrenheit as the max. And then we just have this color bar extra arguments, and that's just shrinking the color bar to make it smaller. So. Here's what it would look like if I removed the shrinkage. Color bar is kind of big, so I'm just shrinking it to make it look a little bit better. Just makes it smaller. So there you go. There's the plot, and it's pr plotted on a Robinson plot, Robinson axes, Robinson grid, if you will. Transformed the data from plate carry. So with this transform function, we're saying, okay, I need to transform this data from plate carry to Robinson. And there's the plot. So this is a default color map. There's other color maps that you can use if you want. Like, for example, we can use CM, we can import CM, which is color map module. We can say, okay, I want to get the color map yellow, orange, red. And we can grab that using this function. Plot that up. And this allows you to import color maps. And right down here, my C map equals my new C map down here, yellow, orange, red. And there's documentation you can go to if you want to learn more about that. But that's how you go ahead and grab new colors. 
So, a lot to unpack there, but that's Cardo Pi, and this is, this, that is how powerful this is. We can plot things in a new projection, which, you know, remember, the department that this class is taught in is geography. We're constantly worried about projections and plotting things correctly. This is how you plot things in a projection that you want, with a color bar that you want. So, based on this example, what I'd like you to do for this assignment is I would like you to go ahead and reference this tree cover data set. And this treecove.nc data set is within the data sets folder under the class and we're going to, it's just a netcdf file, we're going to read that in like so. So xarray.open data set and we're going to give it a data set. Make sure that your path is correct. This will not be your path. Your path might be something like downloads slash geog 473-673-master slash datasets slash treecove.nc but you're going to need to tell Python where you have this file stored and the name of the file. So we're going to remove bad values aka values where the percentage is below zero. You can't have negative percent of tree cover. So this by the way this is just tree cover over, over the world and it, it is just in units of percentage, so it's either it's either negative two percent or it's a, or somewhere in between negative two and a hundred percent. We need to get rid of anything below zero percent. Those are not real percentage values. You can do that using the xarray.where function. So if I come up up here, xarray where there's the xarray.where function, and it gives you some examples on how to use that. It's pretty straightforward. My internet's a little bit slow up here, but that will load and it will tell you a lot more about that function, so that's how you would do go about that. Plot the tree cover percentage in North America with a green color map. So you'll have to reference this color map link up here and find a green one. We used a yellow, orange, red one. You're going to just want to find one that's just green because this is tree cover. And then we want to plot it in a projection of Lambert conformal. Now, I will tell you that Treecove NC comes as CCRS plate carry. So here's your transform. Here's your projection that you actually want to plot in. X-ray wear finally loaded up. So you can just use X-ray wear. Some examples down here. So X-ray wear Y lat is less than 1. So there's a lot of different things you can use. And there's simpler examples out there as well. But all we're going to do is make a plot of tree cover and then submit that plot to Canvas.